Okay, so let's start uh, integrating our velocity. So it's very, it's fairly sim uh, similar to what we've already done, but we need to do a couple of extra things. So let's copy and paste again, or let's maybe put this to manual so it doesn't auto update. So let's copy and paste one. Uh, and then what we want to do is because if we look at our cache here, so one for some reason it's erroring there. Does well, it doesn't matter, I guess. Anyway, uh, anyway, so if we middle mouse on our uh, cache here, you can see your velocity is also split into three different velocities. So fell one, fell x, fell y, fell z. So what we need to do is we need to extract it separately as well. So let's type fell x and write it out as an attribute. So we kind of want we want to keep it afloat, even though velocity is a vector, has three components, we're going to extract these separately. So just type fell x. We're not going to type v dot x. We're just going to make our own holding variable for this. And later, we'll write it out to velocity. So I can call this fell x. This one fell y. Let's say fell y, fell y. And then fell z. Well, let's see, all right. So this will extract the velocity. Again, now we need to copy all of that stuff. So maybe let's move all of the stuff here a little bit down. Right, so let's copy fell x. Let's copy fell y. And then let's copy well z all right and again if you want to extract more attributes you can just do it like this just keep adding like if you want to extract rest just do it like that or whatever color you can extract anything you want just the same way and then copying it back the way we are doing over here okay so now we have this um as a fell x fell y fell z so let's check if this is actually working all right so now can just go in here. So now we need to write this out as actual velocity. Uh, so we have it as placeholder variables now. So we can just do it in a, maybe in a, do it in a separate wrangle. Say that at so at v dot x equals vel. So at vel x at v dot y equals at vel y. And at v dot z equals at vel z. There we go. Turn to spreadsheet. So now you can see we have it as a regular velocity vector. So we should be able to visualize this. You can see we can visualize this now as velocity. So it's picking up. We don't actually need those other attributes anymore. So we can delete. Fell x, fell y, fell z. Maybe if there's some extra attributes on here that we also don't need, so we don't need any of this stuff. So we probably delete all of that. I'll probably save up, uh, save some space as well. So you can see we would go from 75 megabytes to let's say 57. So it's quite nice. So now we have this, um, and I found that I had better results making the uh, velocity with a VDB. So not doing the volume sample, but actually doing it as a VDB. I had some issues doing it with the volume sample. Um, maybe when I was just testing it out, I just set it up wrongly. But what I ended up doing was still creating this one from a VDB. And then we also have some separate controls uh, because then what we have is we can have separate uh, voxel control on our VDB. Uh, velocity VDB. And again, we probably want to keep the velocity VDB lower because we don't need it to be super high resolution. So what we could probably do is take VDB from particles, put it in there. Then we don't want to do a surface. What we want to do is we want to select an attribute. So we want to select the V, velocity attribute. We want the VDB name to be VEL. We want it to be a displacement, velocity, or acceleration. 
and then it's going to be super slow. So maybe I want to cancel that, put it in manual. Probably we want to use the same point separation that we have there. So that's the problem with my keyboard all of a sudden. Okay. So that's copy and paste. No, not that one. Let's copy this. Paste it in there. Paste it in there. Paste it in there. Have a look. So this will be our velocity. Create well. Three middle mouse. So you can see as a VDB, this will be written out as just vel. What you could do is if you use convert VDB, we don't necessarily need to do that, but you can uh, say VDB and we can say that um, so volume and split this joint volumes. If you do that, you can see it splits it out as separate volumes again. Then I put middle mouse on this. So you can see this is a this is a VDB now, so we probably want to keep it as a VDB. So probably what we need to do is we need to split this joint in volumes and then convert it back to VDB. Now we have a VDB with three separate elements. And what we could do is we can merge it in. Because remember, these are just separate primitives. Uh, so you don't need to worry about integrating it into whatever voxel. They are just separate, uh, separate primitives. So now we can see we have all of our channels back. So if we go to our visualization, it still works. Let's just turn down the density a little bit. Now let's test out if we actually get velocity. So how we can test that out is by scattering some points. Remember we did this before with the volume trail. So just scatter some points in our density. So some scattered points. Now let's do volume trail. Let's put it in there. Then velocity volumes will be V dot star. All right. So you can see we get nice volumes here. And with this velocity VDB, we could, if we wanted to, like uh, we could downsample it, for example, maybe we don't need uh, as, as much resolution in that. So we, could, we don't necessarily need to do that right now, but let me just show you uh, VDB resample. I think this will work. Maybe it doesn't actually, I'm not sure. Let's see if it actually works. So let's see, I don't really use this that much. Uh, I think I made it a lot higher resolution now. Yeah, you can see, so if I up this by three, see we get a lower resolution, VDB, and probably there's not that much difference. Yeah, you can see there's a little bit of difference, but just so you know how that works. So we got proper velocity working now as well. So, this is our rebuilt volume. So this is our original volume and our rebuilt volume. And this will also work on the high resolution, but it's just gonna be a little bit slower so we can try it out. Uh, I think I wrote the high resolution in the first, so let's have that cook. This is gonna take a little bit longer because, yeah, there we go. So, Again, also has velocity. Let's try to check it out with the volume trail. Still works. Perfect. So with that out of the way, we can start putting this inside of our uh, flip simulation. Oh, and by the way, this, this thing, of course, with the uh, point deformer also still works. If we probably, if we put it down, it will work better. You see, now we're doing it on a high resolution volume. This still works. Again, you could also do this noise stuff on a actual volume and change your volume shape this way, but uh, because we need to go through flip, we need it to be points anyway. 
So yeah, let's uh, head on over to the next step, which will be taking these points that we have. So that will be these points and then pipe them through a flip simulation. And then when the flip simulation is done, we're gonna mesh those, well, not mesh those, we're gonna convert those back to our pyro simulation. So let's start doing some flip simulation.